Hello everyone, welcome to Beaver's Hobby Channel. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Xstar VX4 charger and 1.5V lithium-ion batteries. Before we begin, I would like to thank Xstar for sending me the charger and two packs of batteries for our review. Now let's get on with the show. Here's the VX4 package. The box is quite long for something like this. And when we flip it to the back, we have the specs. As you can see, in this version, it uses USB power delivery, so it can utilize more power to charge your batteries. And here's why the box is quite long, uh, because it comes with a USB PD adapter as well. So, let's open it and see what's inside. Pull it from the back. Like that. Okay, so, the... The adapter is the first thing you see. And it is USB PD 20 watt adapter with USB C. And here we have the charger. All right, that's it in the box. It seems like it is a little bit bigger than the VC4SL I'm using. So here's the charger and we have the USB Type-C cable. The cable is not very long. Here's the manual. I'm gonna list all the batteries it can charge in the description and on the video. So I don't have to read all of it. It just is also on the website anyway. So you can just pause the video and read it. And here's the charger. It feels a fair bit bigger than the VC4SL. All right, here's the VC4SL I'm using, so. Okay, so it is substantially bigger than the, than the VC4SL. Let's get the negatives out of the way first. Despite it being bigger than the VC4SL, it still supports the same battery sizes, with the 32650 being the biggest one. And even though it now uses USB power delivery, it still outputs the same power as the previous version. They also cut the internal resistant indicator out of the VX4. And that's pretty much it. Now let's look at the improvements. It can now charge 1.5 volt lithium ion batteries. It has an extra contact point for smaller batteries. So now you can insert AA batteries without any problem. But for some AAA, you might need to lift the back up a little bit to make it contact properly. Here you can see that it doesn't make contact, so you need to lift the back up a little bit to get it to touch the contact point. But this one with no rear cover, you can just put it in fully down and it makes the contact properly. Here's how to use it. Every time you plug it in, it will be in the default mode, which is the lithium ion. If you want to charge the live VPO, you are going to have to long press the C slash V button. Until the mode is switched to live VPO, and you will see the indicator change to live VPO mode. And to go back to the lithium ion mode, you just need to repeat the process by long press the CV button. And that's it. Next, to switch between the charging mode and the battery capacity test mode, you have to hold the mode button. And it will go from charge to grading. And now you can insert the batteries. First, it will charge the battery to full, and then it will draw the power to check the capacity. And finally, it will charge back to full. Once it is done, you are going to see done on the screen. The terminal voltage for nickel metal hydride is 1.47 volt. And the terminal voltage for lithium ion is 4.18 volt. In conclusion, the main upgrade from the VC4SL is the ability to charge 1.5 volt lithium ion. To put it simply, it's like a combination between the VC4SL and the BC8. 
if you already have the VC4SL and you don't need to charge the 1.5V lithium ion, I don't see why you need to upgrade. And if you are looking for a charger that can charge from Nikometo Hydride to lithium ion, the XSTAR VX4 is a great choice. They also sent me these 1.5V lithium ion batteries to try out. So now we have three types of double and triple A rechargeable batteries. First we have the usual 1.2V Nikometo Hydride batteries. And then we have standard lithium ion 3.7 or 3.6V. And finally we have the new addition lithium ion batteries but it is 1.5V. Basically it is lithium ion but it has a controller inside to cap the output to 1.5V. The advantages of using this kind of battery being that it is much lighter than the Nikometer Hydride batteries and it supplies constant 1.5V. Basically you can use this with any appliances that use AA or AAA batteries. But should you? I have been using this since 2021 in my game controllers and it was great because it is light and it lasts very long. And it is somehow the only battery that I can use with my Wii Remote and it shows full 4 bars of battery. However, the voltage doesn't drop until it runs out. So the controller would just stop working or cut off without any warning. Anyway, as long as you don't use it for competitive online gaming, it'll be alright. And the new version, the one with blinking light when charging, will only charge with the VX4. Now that it comes with triple air size, I have to try it with my radio control cars, specifically with my Mini Z MRO3. It turned on alright and worked for a while, until I noticed it, a strange yet familiar smell coming out of the car, and then it stopped working. And that's the moment I realized I've just burnt my circuit board with this battery. So it works fine for car transmitters, but I don't recommend you put it in your cars. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.